Next question we have here, uh, which of the following yields is the highest for a bond trading at a discount? Trading at a discount. <clears throat> so we have a bond here. Um, it's trading at a discount. Which one of these yields do y'all think are going to be the highest? <clears throat> Feel free to uh, type in the uh, question pane there. Does everyone know how to get a lot of bully day? You know, some people join late, Chris. Oh, for the people who, um, thanks Tom, for the people who join late, um, if you would like to respond, and I highly encourage that you respond, go to the, that poll EV at the top there, type into your browser, pollev.com dash big dog Ian, big dog Ian, and that will give you access here. I uh, promise, I don't see your results, who answers what, um, but I think this makes it a little bit more engaging. Um, jump in here type in what you think is the right answer choice, pollev.com dash big dog Ian. Big dog Ian. Big dog Ian. So give it another couple of seconds or so. <clears throat> pollev, big dog Ian, uh, big dog Ian, I-A-N. Polyv.com. Type that in, open up that in the browser, then you type in big doggy in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Let's look at the responses here. So we've got a little bit of a split uh, yield to call, yield to maturity. And uh, the correct answer here is going to be B, yield to call. Um, when a bond is trading at a discount, the yield to call is going to be the highest. And um, this one gets a little tricky. Um, Sometimes you might, you might find yourself, you might be thinking, you know, Chris, Tom, you know, what the heck even is yield to call, yield to maturity? What does that even mean? How do I even calculate that? And luckily for you, because I like to spend my free time building PowerPoint slides, um, I made up a little slide here that I think is going to be a good reference, a good resource um, in order to visualize exactly how these different types of yields work. Um, so on this next slide here, if my PowerPoint deck decides to work. So on this next slide here, uh, we've got the teeter-totter. And you may have seen this before, is the, uh, the bond yield triangle. And for purposes of this exam, you won't have to actually calculate yield to maturity or yield to call. It's actually a little bit more important to understand here fundamentally what's going on. Um, I like to use this uh, representation, this little slide here to picture exactly what's going on. And sometimes on this exam, you may just want to remote memorize these type of things. You may or may not need to use yield to call or yield to maturity outside of the exam. So it's best to take this bond triangle here and have it back pocket. So what I mean by that is when I was taking this exam for the bond yield triangle, I would maybe on a piece of scratch paper, draw out the triangle as I see it here, I put discount on the left, I put premium on the right here, and I would uh, order it in the way that it appears here. And the way to remember it, a little trick here, is on the right-hand side for premium, nominal yield, NY, is always going to be at the top. NY, obviously, for everybody here, if you don't know, NY stands for New York. If you're a New Yorker, anything that's labeled NY is New York. And everything in New York trades at a premium. Everything is priced at a premium. Everything that exists is at a premium. So if you want to eat, if you want to go to the club, if you want to take an Uber, everything is going to be a premium. Premium at the top, NY, followed by CY, then yield to maturity, then yield to call. On the flip side, you have the discount there. And another way, another trick to remember this one is YMC, not A. It's like the song YMCA, right? It's fun. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. For me, it's fun to stay 
at the bond yield triangle, the teeter-totter. And the way that I remember that is YMC, not A. So we have the yield to call, the yield to maturity, the current yield, and then the nominal yield there. <clears throat> so on the right-hand side here, I have a little example for everybody to help us understand intuitively what's going on here. So let's just say that we buy an 8% bond for $900. We have an 8% bond, we buy it for $900. It has a 10 year to maturity and is callable in five years. So a lot of stuff going on here for this bond, but don't be surprised if you get a question like this on the SIE. Fortunately, we'll be able to go through it piece by piece. So for everybody here, if you wanna type in the questions pane here, what is the nominal yield for this bond? Nominal yield. Hey, and I have a question for Tom actually, Tom. What's another way to say nominal yield? What is another I just, term? I just call it coupon because coupon. Uh, I don't know why they have two different names for it, but it's the same as the coupon. Yeah, exactly. It's just a coupon. So you, 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 you might have to be able to use that term interchangeably, nominal yield, coupon yield, coupon, but effectively, this is just a coupon. So for this example here, the coupon is going to be 80 bucks, the annual interest here. And when are, when, are, when are interest payments made on a bond? When are interest payments made on a bond? Interest payments are made semi-annually. So the coupons will be paid semi-annually on bonds. This 80 is the annual interest, but we divide this by par to get the nominal yield, which is 8%. So that's the nominal yield, 8%, it's a coupon payment. And we get paid those coupons semi-annually. Moving on for current yield, what is the current yield on this bond over here? Current yield. Current yield formula is going to be the annual interest divided by the current market price. So our annual interest here was 80, the current market price is 900, therefore, therefore our interest current yield is going to be 8.9%. Nominal yield, current yield, 8.9%. Now we have the yield to maturity and the yield to call. And yield to maturity and yield to call, you don't have to calculate these, but the most important thing to remember about these is the following. <clears throat> um, the differences between yield to maturity and yield to call. Yield to maturity is effectively saying how much money will we get what is, the, what is the rate of return? What is the rate of return? So what is the yield if we hold this bond until maturity? So if we hold this bond to maturity, if we hold this bond to maturity, what's gonna happen? What happens when a bond matures? Can anybody tell me here what happens when a bond matures? What do you get on that maturity date? Two important things, two important things. We will, get, we will get the final coupon. So upon maturity, we will get a final coupon and, and we get the par value back. Well, what yield to maturity is saying, well, look, we paid, we paid 900 bucks for this bond. We paid 900 bucks for this bond, but we're going to get a thousand back at maturity. So if you think about this, if this is a 10 year bond, we're going to get the difference of par less what we paid for it, which is going to be a hundred. And over the 10 years that we hold this bond, we're going to be getting hypothetically, theoretically $10 of extra interest per year. That's on top of the 80 that we are getting annually. So you can think of it like this. We pay a discount on this bond. We're getting $100 at the end upon maturity. We're going to be getting, therefore, $100. We divide that by 10 year, which is the maturity of this bond, 10 extra dollars per year. You add the annual interest, which is the coupon here is 80. So we're getting 90 bucks and 90, right? If we want to calculate the yield on that, we're going to put 90, we're gonna divide that by 900, which is what we paid for it, and that's a 10% yield there. So you can kind of see how this bond 
triangle is coming together. The nominal yield, the coupon was the lowest because this is a discount bond. Then we have the current yield at 8.9%. Yield to maturity is gonna be 10%. And the yield to call is gonna take that one step further by saying, look, if a bond, if a bond, if a bond, if a bond has a callable date, so for instance, this bond in my example has a five year callable date. So come year five, it's going to be able to be called. If this bond is called in five years, what's the return going to look like? And we can see here from a high level, not going to go into the math here just for sake of time, but we can see that it's the same concept as the yield to maturity. Instead of maturing in five years, in 10 years, it's going to mature in five years. You're going to get the par value. You're going to get that annual interest. And you're going to take that 100 bucks that you're getting and distribute it in the five years that you hold it and not the 10 years. So the, the return there is going to be a little bit higher than the yield to maturity. So that's how, that's how intuitively these different yields work hand in hand. And you don't have to know the calculations, but know that this is how it works at a fundamental level. Cool. Bond yields, best case scenario for these type of questions, draw down this triangle and write out, write the yields here. YMC not A for discount, New York at a premium, always for a premium, and then current yield, yield to maturity, yield to call.